Good evening. My name is Ruth and I'm with Faye Hollow Homestead. And today is the last installment of my four part series of the medicinal herbs and their purposes on my homestead. Now, I did the upper garden, I did the vegetable garden, which is also kind of the herb garden, and I did the food forest. And now I have random herbs all throughout the property. I'm gonna take you around to see some of the ones that I like the most and why. I'm gonna stop, start you off with my hawthorn. So I have this very well protected. This is a slow growing shrub tree and it has some thorns on it, hence the name hawthorn. And it is, you can see it's this, bush right here okay now I have it protected because I had things eat my other one and so until that gets stronger and bigger I'm gonna keep that in a fence but the berries on that are the thing that are the best uh, it gives me red berries well it will eventually it is a very slow growing shrub and it is good for the heart because it dilates the arteries when you have these berries and uh, it is very anti-cancer, antioxidant, um, anti-tumors. Uh, it helps with DNA damage and heart and muscle pain. And it pairs really well with motherwort. I actually really just love that, that shrub just because it has uh, such beautiful flowers as well. And I had one that was going to be outside of what would be eventually my, my window uh, of my bedroom, but it got eaten by my dog. <laughs> Finn has watched me um, weed, and so now he likes to go around and pluck plants out of the ground, and it's very infuriating, <laughs> but it's super cute too. Here we are outside the upper garden, and this patch right here is my stinging nettle patch. And I don't worry too much about it getting um, banged up with the fence line. Uh, or the extra fence that we have right here uh, because it's super hardy and, and once it gets established it's a little bit hard to get rid of and actually right in front of it is a brand new patch of Jerusalem artichokes that I planted maybe three weeks ago and this is how much growth has come already from that so I'm very excited about this uh, but first let me talk to you about the stinging nettle now Stinging nettle not only is beneficial because of these little tiny flowers that you see that are forming, uh, they're not ready yet. They're not doing their thing yet, but they will open soon. And they are just a pollinator magnet. I mean, like super, super pollinator magnet. Um, this is one of the best things that you can have to draw in good beneficial bugs for your homestead or your garden. So uh, having stinging nettles just for that purpose is really good. Also. Uh, stinging nettles is probably one of the most nutrient dense plants on the planet and um, I mean it gives you great vitamins, iron, calcium. It is so high in nutrients that if it didn't have those stinging hairs all over every inch of it, um, scientists have thought that it would probably end up being wiped out off the face of the earth. Uh, within a week because the animals would just completely devour it. So thank God it has those stinging nettles, those stings on it so that we can reap the benefit of this plant as well. So this is something that when you steam it, dry it, boil it, any of those things uh, where you process it, it the sting comes off of it so you don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, I can put this directly into a tincture and I don't have to worry about the sting getting into the tincture. I've had the tincture many, 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 many times uh, because it is so good. And then tea from it, eating it straight. I mean, not from the garden, but I mean like <laughs> eating the plant itself uh, after like stir frying it or boiling it or steaming it. It's really good stuff. So the stinging nettles are really good. Um, I just can't, I can't recommend more highly having that and eating that on a daily basis. I mean, that's, that's one of the best things that you could ever have. Okay, so that's the top of there. Now I'm gonna take you over near where my house is uh, because planted around the house, 
No, I'm going to take you up by my mother-in-law's house first. Okay, she's got something up there that I put next to her rock, rock wall that's really good. Okay, so behind these, because it likes a little bit of shade, down here, you can kind of see there's the tag for it. Right there is my Don Kwai. And this is just a really happy spot. This is my mother-in-law's um, pollinator garden. And it's just gorgeous. It's really, really gorgeous. Let me get out of here real quick. So Don Kwai, uh, also known as Chinese Angelica, is also, uh, it's kind of known as like the female ginseng. It is everything that a female is going to need, basically, um, if there's anything hormonal going wrong with her body. Um, it is really good for libido, menopause, cramps, PMS. It helps with tonifying, uh, invigorating, and replenishing the blood. And then it also helps with relieving pain. So uh, Don Quiet is a really, really important medicinal if you're going to be um, doing women's herbal stuff. And so that's something I'm interested in. I'm a woman after all. Anyway, so uh, we've got that going for us. Uh, and then we've got some Solomon seal in the same area. So let me show you the Solomon seal. So here is some Solomon seal. And you can see there's berries hanging underneath. Well, there was, if you can see that. Um, maybe you can see from here. But the berries hanging underneath. There's also a variegated version right there. That's just pretty. Um, right here, here's another one. But so Solomon seal is a anti-inflammatory. Uh, it is used as a skin tonic, so it helps with like bruises, boils, hemorrhoids, things like that. It can also help with like lung issues. So one of the reasons why it's called Solomon seal is because when you dig up the root, which is usually the thing that you use, that root has all these uh, marks on it that kind of end up looking like... Uh, well, they say King Solomon, right, from the Bible, but uh, like any kind of signet ring had been pressed into the seal or into the root of the Solomon seal plant. And there's those marks all over it. And so it's a really interesting root to see. Um, but that's why they call it Solomon seal, because of those marks that look like signet uh, rings uh, pressed into it. Okay, so here I am. I'm right outside my house. This is my my lavender garden and then my themed garden, which has purples and yellows and silvers. Uh, it is not just themed by color though. It, there is also food in this uh, garden and then there's also uh, medicinals. And so let me show you one of the medicinals that I have in here. Well, let me show you all of them. So in another video I talked about Liatris. This is a more mature version of Liatris. Eventually this will turn into a purple feathery top, um, but I did not have to replant this three times like I did the other ones, so it is farther along. So here we go. We've got this. I mean we've got dill and parsley. Uh, we've got fennel and cilantro, but then right here, if you can see, this fuzzy looking thing right there, that is it's called Southern Wood, which is a type of Artemisia, and it is a digestive because it's a bitter. Most Artemisias are gonna be bitters. Uh, it's antiseptic, it helps with coughs, uh, tumors. Uh, you can use it as an insect repellent. Um, it helps with loss of appetite. If you have an upset stomach, um, intestinal spasms, if you have depression or memory loss, you can use this and it's just, it's a really, really great thing to have in your, in your repertoire if you're going to have an apothecary garden. Um, and then this is a tree right here. This is the choke cherry and that is the wild cherry. It's a native actually and you can see it growing out in the wild. Um, it's also good that it's a native because it helps with pollinators. I do believe the swallowtail butterfly likes to 
have the choke cherry as one of its main uh, host plants. And you can see some tobacco coming up through it. That's cool. So um, choke cherry or wild cherry, uh, you can eat the fruit off of it and it's very good. But usually people use the roots and the bark if you want to do something like a blood tonic or a sedative, uh, just a general tonic, I guess. Um, it's good for colds. You can make wine from the fruits. Uh, so it's just a really good thing to have around. Okay, so let me, let me go over my blue indigo first. So this is blue indigo right here. And I just planted that, so it's not looking like anything super fancy yet. But blue indigo is good for dye. Uh, it's very valuable for the dye. In fact, it used to be highly prized for that. But it is also a bitter, so that means it stimulates the digestive system, right? Uh, it also helps with the immune system, fight against uh, like bacterial infections. Uh, if you have uh, ovarian or stomach cancer, uh, people have used blue indigo for that. So that's a good thing to have. And my Nankeen cherry is going nuts. I planted this last fall and it looks amazing. It was just a stick earlier. Look at all my tobacco. Oh, all those white flowers, they bloom in the evening, which is really cool. Here's my other, my other Nankeen cherry. You need two different kinds of Nankeen cherries. Uh, in order to uh, get fruit. Now, this is my chase tree and it is young still. I planted it last year. This whole garden I planted last year. So this is a new garden for me. But my chase tree, this is kind of re uh, related to my Nergundi tree, which if you saw the food forest, the part three uh, of my medicinal herb tour, uh, I talked more about the, about the Nergundi tree. But the chase tree, as the name implies, it kind of helps with um, uh, easing hormonal imbalances. So if your libido is too high, then this helps. If your libido is too low, this helps as well. Uh, it helps with menstrual pain. Um, it stimulates progesterone. Uh, and then again, it balances those hormones, which is a big deal. And that's mostly the berry um, that you use from the chase tree. Uh, okay, so here, this is my Forsythia suspensa, and this is not the, uh, the normal Forsythia that you would see at, at, for sale at, uh, like a Walmart or something like that if you were getting Forsythia plants. So the raw fruit you can use for, uh, lung health, tonsillitis, and bronchitis. Now, when COVID first happened, again, I told, talked about this in the last, um, in the last video, my sweetheart. Um, right when COVID hit was right when I was ordering all my herbs uh, and the seeds and the plants and stuff like that. And so I focused a lot of the herbs that I got for um, bronchial infections, pneumonia, uh, anything with the lungs, anything that helps with the immune system, stuff like that, because we just weren't sure, you know, it was brand new, like literally we were within like that first week of going, oh, there's, there's cases in the U.S. Like, so, um, like I said, this is a one-year-old garden. I planted this last year with the plants that I got. So, uh, I got suspensa specifically because I had read several articles saying that they had seen positive results in using suspensa, uh, to fight off COVID. And so that was one of the reasons why I got that, uh, bonus <laughs> is that I just love the way that it looks. It's a beautiful flower when it blooms, uh, and it's a very bushy plant that I, that I wanted. So I wanted a, a forsythia anyway. This is not as invasive as some of the other uh, forsythias. Uh, so that was another plus. And then, you know, we didn't know what was going on with the whole COVID thing. And so uh, I ordered that as well to help with anything that could potentially have happened. So, oh, prairie sage wort. I want to show you my prairie sage wort. Let me show you this. Okay, so here is my prairie sage wort. And I am so blessed to have this. This is uh, an antiseptic, it is an analgesic, antiparasitic, 
uh, anti-cancer, antidepressant. I mean, this is a really, really great herb to have. And it's just beautiful. Look at how fuzzy that is. I'm thankful for that. Okay. Do I have anything else in here that I want to talk about? No, I think we're good. Oh, wait, no. I wanted to talk about the balloon flower. Okay, so here is my balloon flower hiding in the lavender. It's right here. Um, so here's the balloon flower. The balloon flower uh, helps with coughs, sore throat, uh, toothaches, um, and then it dilates the bronchial vessels. Uh, so again, this is kind of the same thing as what we were going with the suspensa. And here is goldenrod. And goldenrod is something that I have been trying to get established in our field for a long time. This is a dwarf variety. Uh, and I have several uh, larger specimens out in the field over here um, because it is such an important pollinator uh, native uh, in this area. So, but the goldenrod really helps with allergies. Now, a lot of people used to know this as like sneezeweed. You know, they thought that the goldenrod was the thing that actually caused allergies, but it's actually a different yellow flower that you'll see in fields uh, with big, large, larger flowers, more like this, whereas the, um, the goldenrod flowers are very, very tiny and they end up being in like spikes. So uh, it helps with allergies. You can make a tea out of that, which is really, really great to help with your allergies. Colds, flu, it definitely helps with sinuses. Uh, so if you put something together with, um, with like yarrow, nettle, elderflower, and goldenrod, uh, I mean, you would have a powerhouse situation going on. So that's a really good combo to use with this. And that, and it's beautiful. And then let's see, we're gonna come on down here. I have a spot over here that I actually need to take away this fencing because uh, it's not doing any good anymore. Uh, we don't really have the, the, the problem of the chickens as much anymore out here. Okay, here is my meadow sweet, and I have meadow sweet right here as well. So the meadow sweet, you can use the entire plant for the medicinal purposes, and it is really good for headaches, uh, specifically like a pounding headache. So if you have pounding headaches, then meadowsweet is a really great tea to have, and you can use the leaves, the stems, the roots, whatever it is that you want, flowers. It is anti-inflammatory, it's good for arthritis, rheumatism, uh, and then you can also use it for fevers. Now something that, that I'm really excited that I have, and I'm a little bit, I don't have a ton of hope for it, but I have it just in case, I don't know. Uh, we have a parasite that's come around in this area of the country, uh, we're on the East Coast, and it has uh, completely wiped out our elm trees. Um, there's not like, there's not an elm surviving hardly anywhere. Um, and so I'm, I'm hoping that maybe it's been a long enough time now uh, where there's been no host plants for this parasite um, that maybe I can plant one and I'll get away with it. And if not, there is some injections that you can do uh, that will kind of help promote an immune response that will help fight against these, um, these parasites or the infection so that, um, that it can combat uh, that and it might be able to survive that way. So I have a slippery elm tree and I am, I am delighted with it and it's small and I just, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Let me show you. So this is my slippery elm tree, and I am so excited to have that. Uh, the slippery elm is really good. Uh, most likely you're going to use the inner bark of it, uh, and when you do that, uh, it does really good things for uh, sore throats, coughs, stuff like that, and so a lot of people will make a lozenge out of the inner bark. Uh, it helps also soothe indigestion. You can use it on your skin uh, to heal any wounds or infections. It can detox the outside and the inside of your body. Uh, it helps with eyes. It helps with uh, the mouth, uh, your respiratory system. If you have ulcers, 
basically slippery elm is a really, really good tree to have if you can grow it. And that's the problem. You got to be able to grow it. So we'll see. I don't know. I hope. But again, we'll see. I'm going to take that fence and I'm going to move it over to where the chickens are uh, and see if I can close up some of those bigger holes in the fence that maybe some of those chickens are getting through. That might help. Okay, I'm over here now. I have a spice bush and I not only have a female, but I have a male so that I know that I'll be able to get the fruit because this is definitely one of those plants that you're going to need both in order to get a harvest, like kiwi, like uh, nankeen cherry. So this is my female spice bush, and then over here, let me take you over here, these cute little chicks. And look at that, isn't that just beautiful? Look at those speckles on the back. And there's one of those black chicks. I let them out for the first time today. I hope that they go back to the right, to the right coop. I hope they go back there. I've gotta get that tub taken care of, it's bothering me. Okay, so here is my other spice bush. So um, it is not doing a whole lot right here. Uh, Finn came over and tried to eat it, but there is some stuff coming up from the bottom. So I'm not too worried about it, but that is my other spice bush and they are kind of close by. So, so spice bush is really good for fevers or colds. Uh, in the Civil War, they used it for uh, a coffee substitute. Uh, because coffee was very scarce then and I don't know about you but if there was ever a coffee shortage I mean nothing can replace coffee nothing but if there was ever a coffee shortage I would want to have something that could kind of replace it and if it worked for them then you know it's good enough for me it also helps with sore muscles bruises joint pain stuff like that and then you can use the seeds of the berries as like a spice uh, kind of a peppery spice some people use it as a as a substitute for allspice. I have some pots down there that you can kind of see that I planted some choke cherry seeds in three years ago and the seeds are actually coming up now and uh, it takes a long time for them to actually develop, germinate, but they're doing it and so now I'm going to be able to plant more uh, choke cherries around the property, uh, especially since that's a native. I want to have that let me show you my pride and joy. Oh my goodness. Guys, this is my eleutherposis. Do you see this? Do you see? I mean, oh my goodness, guys. It goes up really tall, too. This is the eleutherposis. It is starting to spread out. You can see little little pieces of it coming up underneath it, but uh, the roots are what are used and you can also use the leaves. I apologize for the dogs barking. Finn or Sasha, come on, cut it up. Okay, so this is, you can hear my uncle's dogs barking down there at the bottom of the hill. Sasha, come on. Yeah, that's not gonna stop. Okay, so Eleutherkosis is also known as Siberian ginseng and it is an adaptogen it helps with diabetes it helps with cognitive function it helps to boost energy and it's just and it has these berries that it produces as well i mean this is this is really exciting uh so the eleutherkosis it took me actually i want to take you down here into the forest um eleutherkosis i had to be on a waiting list for that plant and each of those plants cost me thirty dollars i mean and they were, they were tiny, they were tiny, but it was the only place out of everywhere, online, uh, local nurseries, uh, non-local nurseries, that I could find this. Uh, it, is a, it is a rare, rare herb. And so um, I am very blessed uh, that I was able to <laughs> Uh, acquire two specimens and that they've lived. They did get attacked by a deer one time, but actually the bigger one is the one that got attacked by the deer. And so uh, it did not hinder it at all. Okay, so now I'm in the forest, uh, the forest edge, and I'm gonna show you uh, a couple of my, my root plants. Now I do have uh, sandals on 
and there is poison ivy in here. I mean, I'm looking at it right now, uh, and I see it going through the, the leaves. I'm not going to go in there without my boots on, but uh, I will zoom in. You'll be able to see some, and then I'll show you that I kind of have a, a ginseng patch that um, I'm very excited about. Okay, if you can see this plant right here, and you can see the poison ivies right there, and the poison ivy is right there. Not something you want to get involved with. Uh, and then it's growing through the leaves. Oh, it's greeny. I'm sorry. This right here is black cohosh. And there is several specimens of that growing up. There's one right behind it right there. There's this one. Uh, there's uh, a couple. There's one right there. Um, and then there's one around the side of the tree. Uh, I planted several roots and the deer do like to come eat it, but it comes back every year. So when I was having my son, I went with a midwife and we went to a birthing center and it was all natural, all, all the, all the home birth kind of stuff, but there, which was really nice because we were living in a barn. There's not a whole lot of place for a home birth when we live in a barn. Uh, but they had me taking tinctures of blue cohosh and black cohosh uh, because it helps induce labor. I do not have a shady enough area right now to have blue cohosh, but next year I am going to be planting a shade garden in the forest uh, and that will be my, my, my root um, and shade medicinal garden and I'm very excited about that to, to start getting that done. So black cohosh with, helps with uh, um, induced labor, it helps with PMS, menopause, uh, it also helps uh, support if you have like brittle bones or something like that, uh, black cohosh will help with that. Um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful native. Um, it's very rare because it got, it got over harvested. And then it's hard to see. Let me, we might not be able to really see it because again, there's poison ivy growing everywhere here. This is definitely a forest garden. So in this area here, this is where our well is. Um, in this area and along the edge a little bit, I have planted many stone root plants or roots and uh, you can't see them coming up right now very well uh, because they have just been planted. So stone root is a vascular tonic and it helps with varicose veins. Uh, and then it's just like one of the best pollinators that you can possibly have in your garden as well or in your forest, I guess. Uh, and then let me show you about the ginseng. So uh, down this area down there and then behind the house on that hill over there, I've planted ginseng. Now this is American ginseng and it is slow growing. I mean like four years before you really even uh, see berries showing up on the, on, from the seeds or the plants. Um, and so it is nowhere near being able to be harvested yet. But um, I mean, I would probably wait like another five or six years before I started harvesting that because I have so many other adaptogenics as well. So, um, but it's nice to have. It's nice to have. I like ginseng. Um, I'm going to just continually plant more of that though. Uh, when you plant ginseng, uh, it's important uh, to know the location that you're planting them, uh, that there's not a whole lot of deer activity, that you can also plant them under maple trees rather than oak trees. And if you can get the stratified seed, because that takes a year off the growing cycle. And it's also uh, more likely to, to grow if you get a stratified seed. Uh, let me look at my list. I missed lemon balm. Oh. But first, let me show you this. This is gonna be the start of my, my shade garden. I gotta redo all this soil, um, flatten it out a little bit make some beds. That's a big project for next year. Right now, this is where we keep like all the stuff we don't want to have rained on. Uh, we don't have a storage shed yet, but we will. Um, this is my Kusa dogwood. And the Kusa dogwood is a flowering dogwood, just like the regular Virginia dogwood. Um, but it also has uh, medicinal properties in the bark. Uh, the bark helps with og. Uh, malaria, fever, pneumonia, colds, uh, and then the berries are edible. 
and you can eat the berries. They're these red fruits that are kind of gnarly looking. Um, but you can also use the fruits in uh, skincare products too because it helps reduce the appearance of wrinkles. Okay, here's my lemon bulb patch. See, there's some oregano up here too, but uh, the lemon balm spreads a little bit. And so I've planted little sprouts of it all along the rock wall because that's just the kind of look that I like and that we're going for. Here's another lemon balm. Lemon Ooh. balm is awesome in teas because of its lemony flavor, but it's also medicinal. So lemon balm helps with stress, insomnia, uh, it lowers blood pressure and blood sugar. Uh, but if you, if your thyroid is very sensitive, you might want to be careful with lemon balm, uh, just to be wise. Okay. Now here's another thing that I had to look for a while for. This is my aloe arborescence. And if you want to see, there's that right there. And I got this from Strictly Medicinal Seeds. Rico Czech does a really good job of, of growing these. And you can hardly find these anywhere. I mean, they're really, really difficult to find. Uh, this is also known as uh, candelabra aloe. Uh, it's good for eye infections. Um, the leaves are good for burns, again, because it's an aloe, right? And also for constipation. Now there's an anecdotal story about aloe arborescence where uh, there's a tribe in like Brazil or somewhere around the Amazon that, um, that has a lot of this growing. And the only people there that die of cancer are the ones that want to die of cancer because they go and they take the inner parts of the aloe and they, they eat that along with uh, honey and a whiskey. And uh, the honey uh, takes all the medicinal properties of the aloe arborescence specifically to the, the farthest extremities and the whiskey opens up the blood, uh, the blood vessels uh, wider so that it can get more of the medicine through the body. Um, and they say that, you know, this cures cancer. That is a, an anecdotal story. I don't know. Um, I wish I could have tried it out with my dad. Um, but uh, I didn't have it yet. So uh, if you can get some aloe arborescence, it's beautiful. It's got this beautiful reddish look and it loves to be in direct sunlight, um, which other aloes don't necessarily like direct sunlight, but it turns this beautiful red when it is. I need to transplant mine desperately. It needs to go into a bigger pot. Uh, so does my pitcher plant <laughs> very much. Uh, but anyway, I wish I had that one earlier. Can I just point out my honeywort? This is not necessarily a medicinal, um, but I just love it. I think it's really beautiful. I planted this from seed earlier this year, uh, and it's really, really gorgeous. Uh, there's a purple iris, purple iris growing right there, blue flag iris. Um, and the blue flag iris is a good poultice for burns, bruises, swellings, and sores. Uh, and that is right there. I'm going to take you back over here by my Kusa dogwood because I forgot something. So I wish you could have seen this when it was in flower. I should have shown it to you guys then, but this has beautiful little flowers, five petals, I believe, purple uh, to light pink. And uh, this is wild geranium. Uh, this helps with diarrhea, uh, bleeding, canker, soil, canker sores, uh, toothache, and you can also use this as an eye wash. Okay, so <laughs> I planted some trees up here. Uh, can you see why we want goats? There is, I mean, I was able to walk up here the other day well, maybe it was like a month ago now, but uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. So <laughs> just so we can say, uh, behind here on the other side of this big tree, I planted two linden trees, two different varieties on the other side of this. And then up in this area, there's a lot of pretty much all the trees that you see up here 
those are all uh, not autumn olive this is autumn olive this is also gonna go um, but this is all tree of heaven and that's just like the worst tree that you can have growing it's really bad so we are gonna have all those we're gonna kill those and cut those down and in its place we're planting native trees so there are um, there's a bunch of sugar maple trees that I planted up here so we'll have a little sugar maple grove I was gonna take you in there and show you the linden trees but I'm looking at this and it's it's too much it's too much <laughs> so the linden tree is really good for um, colds fevers insomnia high blood pressure bronchitis itchy skin and it's just got to be one of the most beautiful trees in the flower that you could ever see uh, it's also good for depression um, if you ever get a chance to see a linden tree in full bloom you've really got to go uh, I am so excited to have two varieties growing right here uh, and uh, they are both doing really well. I got those from Burnt Ridge Nursery and and I am I am anxiously awaiting for them to get mature. But uh, with trees, you gotta just wait. But time passes anyway, right? And I know that um, in five years, I'll have wished that I would have planted these trees. And so uh, I think for a while in my life, I was thinking, well, that takes so long. Uh, I'm not even going to bother, but at this point, it's like, do it so that when the time does pass, uh, you can appreciate it because time will pass anyway. So uh, that is that is pretty much it. Uh, I think there's probably one or two that I missed. Probably there was a lot. And um, I know there's some out in the field. There's some more that I planted uh, along along the edge of the forest line there and I'm not sure if they came up so I didn't say anything about those uh, if they do do well and I see them later on this year I will definitely point them out to you but uh, I really only want to show you things that were growing and that I knew were growing I can't wait to get a goat I mean the goat is going to just absolutely love this for sure uh, but that's it so that is the end of my medicinal herb garden tour uh, maybe we can do some apothecary stuff later on. I can show you some of my apothecary things that I've that I've put together But that is the herbs that I have and I grow and I am a strong believer in growing your own herbs if at all possible uh, especially if you're going to be using things like ginseng or cohosh or you know Solomon seal or things where you use the roots and once you use them uh, the plant is dead and a lot of the golden seal a lot of the ones that you plant um, like that, they're things that are in the wild that have been over harvested. And so it's really good to have like your own supply so you're not diminishing the wild supply and we can kind of maybe let those take over again. Uh, that would be really, really great. Japanese barberry. I need to show you about the Japanese barberry. Okay, Japanese barberry. I'm sure that I can see one right here. It's gonna, let me, bum bum bum. Here's, here's a Japanese barberry. It's invasive in this area, or so they say, invasive. The invasives will heal the earth, I believe. Uh, but Japanese barberry, let me show you. Here is a Japanese barberry, and that is, uh, medicinally, it's kind of the replacement for golden seal, and it grows in the areas where golden seal has been uh, overly harvested, which is very interesting very interesting indeed one of the reasons why I'm starting to believe that invasives might not be as bad as we think they are but um golden uh well golden seal roots are golden but uh the J Japanese barberry as well so everything that is good about golden seal is good about Japanese barberry and the nice thing is it is considered invasive and it spreads rapidly and so you can harvest the roots of these plants and not worry about damaging the ecosystem uh, and the roots are very golden in color, which is a, a very good indicator that there's a medicinal property going on there. So anyway, we got a lot of that going on. I have a huge jar of those roots in my house that I made tinctures of. I make tea with them. Uh, it is very good. So anything that you would use golden seal for, you can use Japanese barberry. That is the end of my tour of my medicinal herb garden and property. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions about any of the herbs at all, just let me know. I will answer everything in the comments. Um, 
if you want me to do another video about specific herbs and everything that I do with them and get more into detail about those, you let me know because I would love to do that. Herbalism is a big deal for me in my life and uh, I love being able to grow the herbs that I want to use. Uh, it is a huge passion of mine. So if you guys want to know how to grow a specific herb, maybe you've tried to do it in the past and it doesn't work and you saw it on here, I can help you with that as well. So uh, let me know, hit that like, notification, subscribe, all those wonderful things that would help me out a lot. Uh, we just hit 300 subscribers. <laughs> I am so excited. I did, I, I'm blown away. I had no idea that it was going to, like obviously, no, I'm not making money off of this or anything, but just that 300 people are interested in seeing you know, the food forest and the herb garden and the animals uh, on almost a daily basis just blows my mind. So thank you. You have encouraged me greatly. I hope you guys have a wonderful night and stay blessed. Mm -hmm.